Welcome, Victoria. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here and be speaking to you about an important topic. And I'm actually really excited before we press record. I was like, oh, I'm excited to get into this. Thank you so much for having me, Sam. And I'm really excited to get into this too. All topics on the table, just ready to get right into it. So you're a breathwork facilitator. And for people who don't understand what that is, what, what does that look like? It's a great question because very often when people hear breath work, they're like, oh yeah, I've been to a yoga class. Like I've done a few breathing exercises and I'm like, yeah, cool, cool. That's beautiful. And the type of the breath work that I do is a little bit different to that. So the type of breath work that I facilitate um, uses conscious connected breathing. So you're breathing in and out of your mouth for a prolonged period of time. In the sessions I facilitate, it's usually an hour or even a little bit more of breathing in and out of your mouth without any pause. And what that does is it brings a lot of oxygen into our bodies and takes us into altered states where we can undergo really deep healing journeys. So it can be compared to a psychedelic trip and many different things can happen in a breathwork session. So that's the type of breathwork I facilitate. Mm -hmm. Do you mind explaining, like, I don't, I don't know if you know the science or whatever you need to look at, but what is, what is it that takes you into that state, that altered state? Great question. There are a few different things that are happening. One of my favorite things is that science actually hasn't fully caught up to it. So there isn't, you know, just hard and fast, like this is exactly what's happening. But from what we know at this point, one thing that's happening is the limbic part of our brain. So that's a newer part of our brain, the emotional brain that makes us very human is stimulated with all of the oxygen we're taking into our bodies, which helps us release suppressed emotion. So many of us weren't taught how to actually feel and live and express ourselves as children. And so we hold it all in. So when we do this breath work, that limbic part of our brain, it's like finally freed. Mm -hmm. And so it can release all, it's like a volcano sometimes, a release of all of these suppressed emotions. And another thing that happens is that our body actually has a capability to produce its own DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which is the spirit molecule. Now, this science is still controversial. As I said, science hasn't fully caught up with it. Um, but they say that our pineal gland can actually produce its own DMT when we go into this breath work. And so that takes us into altered states where we can connect with our spirit molecule, our spirit part of ourselves, which is where some deep healing can happen. So the breath work journey can be emotional. It can be very cosmic and spiritual. Um, it can also just bring in like insights because we're oxygenating our brain. You, you, have you seen the movie Limitless? Yes. Yeah. So it can be like that where suddenly your brain is just operating in like pure clarity and then you can get in like ideas and insights about your business. So there's many different things happening at a physical level that allow for a whole variety of experiences. Yeah, I really love that. Like, and I experienced, like I had a very intense breathwork experience only if, uh, only a few months ago now. And what was going on for me before leading into this was a suppression of emotion, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I was in this, I noticed like my hands were cramping, like, it, like everything was like going like this. And the facilitator was like, you have to use your voice at this point. Like she's like, use your voice to release whatever's going on. And so it was almost like my whole being was trying to resist this thing. And then as soon as I allowed my voice, um, I think it started off as like, maybe anger that was trying to come out and then just like dissolved into sadness. And as all the emotion just like came out and I didn't need to know the story, I just allowed the emotion, everything just like, like I accessed that point of clarity, that point of like euphoric kind of feeling. And it just like washed over me and it was an incredible experience from that point. Um, but I love that you say it can, it can release suppress emotion that perhaps could have been in there for a long time. Right so long and I love how you said that your body was tightening up we lovingly call that t-rex because the hands can kind of come up here <laughs> you kind of look like you're a t-rex and it's it's the body sending us messages and when you tap into that mind body connection you're like oh I've been holding on and this is literally what it feels like to hold on and we're experiencing that most of us are experiencing that at a subconscious level from day to day it's it blows my mind now that I've gotten into this breath work and I've worked with like hundreds of clients in this 
it blows my mind how the average person is just kind of walking down the street, you know, maybe they have like a smile on their face and they're just doing their thing. But beneath the surface, that human is holding on to something their dad said to them when they were 12 or what their high school experience was. You know, we've just internalized all of this and we hold it in our tissues and you can see it in our postures. And a client will come to a breathwork session and be like, hey, you know how you're doing? Like all cheery. And then 10 minutes into the session, just everything coming up. So Mm -hmm. some of us hold on stuff for decades and it's so it's not always easy for me to watch how much pain the average human holds, but then it's so beautiful because as you said, out the other side of that is just euphoria and this freedom that I believe is our birthright to live in. Yeah. And even something else I've experienced, not as deep breath work, but just letting go of that constriction, like recently, and especially like I think a lot of women can relate to this. Like we walk around very constricted, right? Stomach in, like, you know, everything like ugh, tense and rock hard. And recently I was in some work where they made you just like release everything, like let your belly out and just connect to your, like let your breath go into like your yoni and like let everything out. And just that experience, like I was like, crap, I've been walking around completely like guarded and tense. And it feels when you experience what it feels like to be like access that freedom or freedom in your body and just breathe deeper, it just feels different and it allows something new to come through, right? It's like a different access point to new energy and it feels so beautiful. It's like, how do I, I don't want to go back to that restricted feeling. So this work that you're doing is so important. Totally. And it's, it is hard to describe that feeling, isn't it? It's like, I describe it as like living fuller almost. It's like life just feels more full. And you're so spot on when you said so many, many of us are just walking around holding on and constricted. And it's interesting because I used to glorify that. Mm -hmm. I used to think that that's what it meant for me to be strong. When I was little, I grew up thinking like, oh, I want to be this strong woman. I had this idea of meeting this powerful woman. And in my early 20s, that's how I defined it. Somebody that was just like, could get through anything and was tight and like holding on and like, you know, you can throw anything my way, life, and I've got this. And what I didn't realize was that in that tightness and constriction, I was living at a fraction of my real power. So I'm so glad that you brought that up because when I was in it, I had no idea that there was an alternative. Mm -hmm. It's like you limiting something. It's like limiting that access point. (laughs) Totally. And there's no surrender. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I'm interested in looking at like the polarity of the masculine and feminine energies, right? And how your how you've experienced breath work to maybe harmonize both of these energies within us because often we find that there's a suppression of one or the other or both as we walk around life. And so what has your been what's your experience been with these energies and how breath work has really helped to find that balance? Great question. And the first thing I'll say is that I personally don't resonate with the language of masculine, Mm -hmm. feminine energy, um, just because a few years ago, it sent me into like a whole existential crisis where I was like, am I like a girly girl? Am I not a girly girl? I'm trying to cultivate more feminine energy. Does that mean I have to wear more dresses or like people say I'm very masculine? Does that mean that like my biceps are too big? And I was getting it really confused with gender. Mm -hmm. And then I was also going through like, trying to uncover my like sexuality, my sexual preferences. And it was this whole thing. And then I actually met with a gender consultant because I needed help. And she was like, oh, well, she's like, I believe we can just drop the language of masculine and feminine. She's like, why don't we just call it what it is? What do you mean when you say masculine? I'm like, oh, I guess I mean more like outward focused and like um, more actionable at getting stuff done. And then when I speak about feminine, I mean more like soft, inward focused, surrendered, living with the flow and so I now use more like yin and yang because that's helpful but just for yeah just for you to know that I personally and just for anybody listening um if they feel the same way because it used to confuse me so much yeah and it confuses so many people and I'm so glad you brought that up because that's what this is 
about of understanding yeah. there is different language that we can refer to as and it's not gender like it's not about gender and we go through this episode in um episode 17 with Stefana Stefandos and we talk about what what is this masculine and, and feminine language mean and what are the attributes that come with it so it's not about yeah man or woman or whatever so I'm so glad you brought that up and we can definitely refer to it as yin and yang because I like mixing it up <laughs> beautiful love that um so thank you for that and to answer your question the most helpful thing that I find about breath work in regards to balancing our energy is that breath work takes us into our own inner world and what our experience of life is. And it helps us tap into our own compass, which is the only way that we can find what's true for us, because there are a lot of epic books out there on how to balance your masculine feminine your yin and yang energy and how to be more like this and how to be more like that and I spent because I've been into personal development for like since my teens and I spent the first part of my personal development journey reading stuff in books and then trying to um, copy that and trying to embody something that somebody else told me was the right way and it wasn't until I discovered breath work that I realized that I can just let all of that go, all of the shoulds around personal development and actually just feel into where I'm at and what's true for me. So before breathwork, I was like, I was reading books about, you know, being a strong woman. And I was like, okay, this is how I have to be. I have to be more like this, more like that. And then my friends that were getting more into like yin energy and healing the masculine were like, no, Victoria, you need to like follow your menstruation and like be really soft. And I was like, oh shoot, okay, now I have to do that. But when I discovered breath work, I went into my own experience. I released my own suppressed emotions that were keeping me imbalanced. You know, my dad never felt his emotions. So he taught me that it wasn't okay to feel mine or um, my mom worked a lot. And so that was my definition of being strong was being a workaholic. And once I released all that pain and breath work, I didn't even have to think about how to balance my yin and yang. It was just who I showed up as naturally because I had blocked all of my, I'd removed all my blocks. So that's been my experience of how powerful breath work is and other tools that take us on that inner journey. You no longer have to think about it. You just get to show up how you naturally show up in balance. I love that. And it's so funny this morning I was like on my walk and I was thinking about how like a lot of what I like to share or help people, a coach or, you know, and even an Instagram post, I write about it from my own experience. Right. And not from the, not from the thing of because I want to talk about myself, but from the fact that we don't want to be told what to do. Yeah. Like we're constantly being told, like bombarded with like what we should and shouldn't do and what's right and wrong and whatever. And it's like, people don't actually want to be told what to do. And often we're going to rebel anyway. Like I'm going to rebel if you tell me what to do. And so I was thinking about it from that aspect of like, we don't, we, we, we don't want to be told. And so how do we tap into our own experience of, of what that means to us? And that's where you said um, you embodied something. And I love that, that you said you embodied something because then you get to feel what it feels like for you. And then you make it up from there. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. And when you were saying that you don't want to be told what to do and people don't want to, it's like, Yes. For the first, I feel like the personal development movie and movement in like the eighties was all about like 10 step programs and five yeah. steps. And like, I figured it out. So follow me. This is the way. And now we're coming into a deeper understanding of it. And we're like, we're so done with like 10 step eBooks. We're so done with that because there isn't a right and wrong. And that's one of the hardest things that I've had to come to terms with on my journey is there isn't a right and wrong. Everybody is where they're at in their journey. And all they need to do is like work through and embody what's true for them in that moment. And it's so easy to say that, but then to live it is difficult. And that's where, yeah, breath work comes in. And one of my favorite things about breath work is that it's an experience. It's an yeah. experiential learning as you described. So by the end of your breath work session, you're not like, all right, what are my actionables from this workshop it's like you're actually embodying a new way of being already right 
and that's what it that's what it's about like I remember the breath work ceremony that I did it was like afterwards there was this time just to write what was what was coming up because you've literally now I like to call it we um like rewire you've rewired something that's going on yeah. so now new thought patterns might show up or new action steps or whatever it is like something new comes through you and you need to just like get that out and so I remember I had that moment of like oh like all I needed was to feel held in that moment all I needed was to feel supported and I feel that so now that I feel supported like what is it that I want to do like it was no longer um like leading into it it was no longer this I didn't know that I needed support and so I was creating all this self-sabotage and all this like procrastination and all this stuff was getting in the way of me doing the thing that I wanted to do because I just needed some support and then I had that experience in the ceremony so on the other side of that I was like oh now this is what I want to do and so I no one could have written an ebook for me to tell me how to do that no. And you would have, you would have read that ebook and you would have kind of been like, okay, yada, yada, yada. We all need support. I get it. That level of learning is different than experiential. Mm. And sometimes people will finish a breathwork session and I'll be kind of um, just unpacking it with them and be like, how are you feeling right now? And they'll look at me and they'll be like, <laughs> self-love is the most important thing or they'll say you know it's all of these things that like we read in books like um I deserve to be supported I don't have to do everything on my own like and you're like yep and it they might have read that in a book a thousand times but they never actually understood what that felt like yeah so that's it's so important for us to actually have an experience of these things that we're reading about all day yeah. When was your first breath work? So like, how, like, how did this show up for you? It was about two years ago. And my friends, Helen and Lucas, um, we were here in Bali and they, I was going to go to a little beach club to like go listen to like a DJ and go dancing. And they were like, oh, there's this breath work thing going on. We're going to go to it. And I was like, cool, enjoy. They're like, I think we're going to like learn how to breathe better. And I was like, amazing. Like, teach me what you learn. And I had lunch with them the next day. They were different humans. Their like eyes were brighter. They were like buzzing. They were like, oh, they couldn't stop talking about it. So then I went to go experience one the next week. And my mind was absolutely blown. Just in terms of like, my first session was all about um, connecting to visions of who I'm here to be. So it was like this veil was pulled away immediately. And it was like, it was a humorous session because I just started laughing at myself. I'm like, why have you been pretending to be this like weird, like shy person that cares about what other people think? Like, that's just not who you are. You're here to do this and this and this and this and this. And I could just see it so clearly that I was like laughing and my whole body was just vibrating with like possibility and excitement. And I left that session and I was like, sweet, I need to do more of this. So then I started going to breath work every single week for a few months and my life changed like that in a few months. I started showing up so differently on my platforms, on social media. My voice just got so much like stronger and more embodied. My audience just like skyrocketed from that. My offerings, my everything, like my business just went through the roof in, in a few months. Um, and then I started talking to people about it. I was like, yeah, I'm doing breath work because they felt a shift in me. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, breath work. They're like, what's that? And I was like, how is this not everywhere? How do people not know about this? It's the best thing ever. Like this should be, we should have as many breath work studios as yoga studios in the world. And then I was just like, all right, if nobody else is going to, not nobody else, I know there's some beautiful breath work facilitators out there. But I was like, if people don't know about this, I'm going to be, one of the people to tell them. And so I did my training and ever since then I've been on this mission to bring it to as many people as possible. Ah, oh, so amazing. Right. And like, what have you, what is some like cool stories that you could share on like, and even if you have one that kind of, um, relates to the yin and yang, like yeah. one where like maybe somebody was like, always in their yang, yang yeah. like energy right and then like they experienced this and then it, there was a shift like do you have an, a story like that that's like my biggest story because I was always in the yang and you know I grew up my mom worked so much and so that and I um I grew up in Haiti which is a beautiful island in the Caribbean um it's also experienced a lot of political turmoil so 
I was held up at gunpoint many times throughout my childhood. I just had a very um, tumultuous childhood. And so I became this very yang human where I was like fully armored. And I was like, nothing touches Victoria. Like you can bring anything my way and I have got this. And I brought that into every area of my life. And I brought that into my business where I was like, I'll do whatever it takes to do what I need to do on my mission. It was like such a hyper yang energy. And that got me to a certain point where in the first couple of years of my business, I was like relatively successful because I was just such a grinder and hustler and go-getter. Mm. But then I reached a point where that, where I plateaued in my work and I couldn't take it any further because hustle only gets us so far with the hustle. We're not being creative. So we're not letting, we're not leaving space for new ideas to come in with the yang. We're not um, surrendering to like, be able to connect with other humans in a deep way and form those deep relationships that then lead our business to blossom in other ways. So there were so many things that I was like, I'm this strong woman. Why isn't my business going further? And I was just pushing and pushing, and pushing. And then I had my first breathwork session. And then I did a few more breathwork sessions. And within three breathwork sessions, I was on the floor, just absolutely bawling my eyes out. And I hadn't cried in like over a decade. I just, I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah. I was just the kind of person where like, I was just so strong. I was just so like, nothing touches me. Yeah. Um, so in that third breathwork session, I was just like snot everywhere. You know, those deep cries where you're like, your whole body is crying and I didn't even know where I was anymore. And the facilitator was like, are you okay? And we started talking. And what it was, was all of the times growing up where I had been terrified and hadn't let myself feel any emotions. I hadn't let myself feel fear. I hadn't been like, oh my goodness, this is really scary or I don't know what to do. I had just tightened it all up and I was living in that fight or flight as a norm. And that's often what's happening when we're um, over yanged is that we had some sort of unstable childhood. So we've just been like, all right, cool. Now I'm just gonna be in fight or flight all the time. And so in that breathwork session, I was just like, letting it all go and it was the deepest surrender I've ever felt in my life it was like holy crap I've been holding on for so long and then after that I connected deeper in my friendships and I could just like show up in a friendship and just be like yeah this is how I'm feeling right now and I surrendered in my work. I'd be like, oh, that opportunity isn't working out. Rather than like pushing in and getting stressed, I would just sit back and then a new opportunity would drop in that was even better. And I wouldn't stress myself out. So then I could be like, you know what? I'm just going to take off this weekend. I don't need to work this weekend, which is something I would never do before. And then in that space, I would get the best creative idea I've ever had in my life. So by healing that yang, I thought my business was going to suffer, but actually my whole life just deepened, including my, my business. Oh, I love that. And, you know, I think about you telling that story to people that may be resonating with that whole, you know, that connected to yang and like can't let go. And I sense that there may be this kind of fear that shows up around but you're telling me I have to go through this breath work to then experience that. Right. And it's almost like that letting go control, like, Oh shit, but I might have to experience some painful things. Yeah. What, do, what do you tell people in that? <laughs> First of all, my heart just goes out to humans that are thinking that because that's exactly how I felt. And it's almost like we're afraid of our own pain and we think that there's like monsters in our closet and it it my just my heart goes out to us because we've been holding on for so long that we don't even want to open the door to see what's in there mm. but it's just us like there are no monsters in our closet there are no like gremlins waiting at the door that we need to keep shutting out all it is is it's the little childhood us that was scared and didn't receive the love that they deserve so if we open that door, it's just a scared little child. And yeah, it might feel painful because we didn't feel that pain in the past. Like when, after I did that first breathwork session or that breathwork session where I was crying, it's not like life is just rainbows and rainbows and unicorns after that. I felt a lot of feelings and pain for the weeks after that. So the first thing I want to say is like, there are no actual monsters in your closet. It's just parts of you that haven't been loved. So you can just bring compassion to it. And the second thing is, 
pain isn't bad in our society and even in the like positivity movement I find that sometimes we're like you've got to be happy all the time like try and avoid pain as much as possible do you feel some bad emotions just meditate your way out of it whereas really we're here to experience the whole spectrum of human emotion and grittiness and pain is one of those so what I like to do for myself now is if I'm feeling emotions that don't feel good I'll just name it I'll be like this is sadness this is sadness or this is loneliness or this is pain and I'll just say that and let myself accept it and then already that takes the edge away and I'm just like oh okay cool I'm just a human experiencing a human emotion yeah I I love that and I really I relate to that massively. Like I used to be the person that was um, all about positivity and like the positive quotes and like, don't come near me if you've got bad vibes, you know, good <laughs> vibes only. <laughs> and something that changed my life was when I heard one of my mentors, um, Kyle Cease, talk about, we're not here to feel good. We're here to fully feel. Yeah. And I thought about it and I was like, yeah, because what we wouldn't be able to access anger or jealousy or sadness if it wasn't serving us in some way. Yes. Oh and my when, gosh, yes. Right. And and when we try and like just like push it out or restrict it or not allow it, then that's what creates even more of the turmoil. But when we just name it, like you said, just name it, okay, I feel I feel sad right now and that's okay. Yes. And then it all all of a sudden it just like dissipates. And it's like, oh, I feel all right now. <laughs> Totally. And I still fall into that trap sometimes because I like, I've got my morning connection time, my morning, my morning meditation. And I'm like, all right, sweet. I do my breathing exercises. And then sometimes, and I'm like, let's activate Victoria. Let's get ready for the day. And then sometimes out the other side, I'm just kind of feeling like a little softer. I have some emotions there and I'm like, oh man, like, why am I feeling this way? So I still fall into that trap sometimes, but it's okay because that's what's being mirrored outside of us still in society. So it's normal that it takes some deeper work to rewire in some time. And I love what you said about each emotion serving a purpose. Mm. And that's something that I definitely was not taught. For example, anger. I grew up, um, my family was religious and I went to a religious school. So anger was like an evil emotion. And anytime I felt anger, it's like, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. And I was never taught that anger just helps us set boundaries. Anger is an emotion that comes up. It's our warrior chakra, our solar plexus chakra. That's like, we don't like something that's happening in this situation. So I'm going to feel anger and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just showing us where we want to maybe spend time with different people or like if we're being a people pleaser and somebody's stepping on our boundaries. So I love how you said that each emotion is just trying to tell us something. Yeah. And then there's, like when you have that belief system from childhood or like that thing that this emotion hasn't been okay, it's suppressed in us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so if somebody's in a breathwork ceremony and there's a su suppressed, say, ang let's use anger because I think that's a powerful one and I think a lot of people can relate to that being a suppressed emotion and not okay yeah. to express. When that's released in breathwork, can that become out of control? Like, can that be, can that be scary for someone to want to release? Mm, great question. So definitely it can be scary. And I've experienced this and you might have as well, just that feeling of like, when you've suppressed something for so long, it's like, as you feel it coming up and you have the facilitator next to you being like, it's okay for you to express this. It's still that question. That's like, are you sure that's okay? Like, are you sure I can let this out? So definitely a lot of fear comes up and especially with anger because anger can show up as like, Rah! Um, but we say in our breathwork workshops, especially when there's like 70 people, we're like, hey, this isn't just going to be like Zen meditating. You're going to hear a lot of noises in this room. And so halfway through the workshop, we've got people crying. We've got people laughing at the top of their lungs because they've suppressed joy their whole lives. And then we have people roaring and screaming and hitting the ground, releasing their anger. And so, yeah, it can definitely be scary and a little alarming. And we had an assistant once that wasn't a breathwork facilitator. Um, this was the last time we did that. And she was in the workshop and she was like, she was just a, a logistical assistant. And she was like, oh my goodness and she literally had to leave the room because she was like what is happening in here because we've been so taught that like emotions are scary but for somebody that's releasing anger for the first time it can feel so freeing 
you know, you're using your voice. You're like, I am me. I am here. I have a voice. I can express myself. And out the other side of that, it's not like you're then just an angry person. It's just something that wanted to be moved. You know, emotions are energy in motion. They want to be moved. So it doesn't last forever. Usually by the end of the session, the person's like back to feeling however they want to feel. Um, but to answer your question, there can be sessions that are really deep and that people, it's in the trauma release as a facilitator, we have to allow people to suppress what's been suppressed without fully going back into it and reliving it and re-traumatizing themselves mm -hmm. so there are different things that we do as a facilitator you can like hold somebody's hand you can speak to them so it's something letting them know that they're safe and they're in the present moment while they're releasing something from their past mm -hmm. yeah that's powerful i remember i remember in the journey that i was in i got to the solar plexus area and I was like, yeah, I'm sweet here. Like, let's move on to the next one. And then somebody, the facilitator come around and just touched my stomach, like the solar plexus and I erupted. And it was like, I didn't want to feel what was there. But then as soon as I felt like there was support there for me to do it, I felt safe. I was able to release. And so I think there is a lot being said by doing this work in an environment where you have a facilitator and support. Yeah, definitely. And people ask all the time, can I do breath work on my own? Like, is it safe? They're like, after a workshop or a private session, they're like, can I just go do that again by myself tomorrow? And yes, it's safe, but we often just can't take ourselves to those places by ourselves. You know, if you didn't have somebody, the facilitator putting their hand on your solar plexus chakra, you probably would have been like, nope, not safe to release that, like hold it in. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's something so beautiful about that, isn't that? And that's something I'm still learning and deepening into is that we're not meant to do this all on our, on our own. Oh, I love that. Like, I still sometimes feel bad if I'm in a tough place. I'll ask my partner be like, hey, like, can we talk about this? I just have a lot of stuff coming up right now. Or I'll um, message one of my close friends and be like, hey, could you do a session on me? I still have that part that feels bad, but I'm learning to let go of that because it's like, I love holding space for my friends. My friends love holding space for me. It's not something we need to feel bad about. We're not meant to do this on our own. Oh my gosh. I, I absolutely am the same as you. Like I hold space for so many people as well. And I think I created that story that's like, I could do this. Like I'll process my shit later. <laughs> I've got, I don't need to, I don't need to like, like put this on anyone, burden anyone. And it's right? like, it's, it's like a, it's like a test for me now. It's like, I remember the other day, I was, I think I was emotional about something. I can't remember what it was, but I knew like a friend came to mind and I was like, I just need to voice him and voice. I didn't even need to call him, but I just need to voice him and say, Hey, I'm, I'm needing to tell someone this and I don't want to, but I'm going to tell you. And I'd started crying in the voice and he just wrote, he sent me a video back. He's like, I loved this video so much. Like, mm -hmm. thank you. And yeah, you're, you're not alone. Like, you know, it's like, we don't have to do this stuff alone. I love in that story you just told that you were actively rewiring in that moment because you felt the tug to do it on your own you felt the story like this is burdening somebody but you brought your consciousness into that and you were like okay I'm feeling this tug to not be sending you this voice note right now but I'm doing it anyway mm -hmm. I love that because that's the rewiring in action mm -hmm. yeah and that's such a big story for me so I have to constantly like I still had it I had it show up the other day where I did it but then I didn't get the reaction I wanted like I got the oh yeah shit I should just handle it on my own yeah. so then it's like okay so do I now take that story back on or do I keep going so it's like you have to be aware of the stories that we play on ourselves I could have just been creating that that story that person might not have had that intention but that's how I've maybe it's like my thing to go up to oh see like you were right <laughs> but it's like yes. probably not so how do you just like look at your stories and what's been told and the thing that you carry so deeply and just continue to show up to it? Yeah, that's a tough one. And I, I love to give myself and other people permission to play with it mm -hmm. because after we have a learning of some sort, say we finish a breathwork session, we're like, sweet, I've got this new way of being and I'm going to bring it into my life. And then part of us can come in and be like, oh my goodness, this is a completely new way of being for me. Like I've never been this vulnerable before. I have to get it right the first time. Mm. And so we're kind of walking on eggshells as we embody this new thing. And I love to just give myself permission to like mess it up a bit and like 
and not even mess it up because again, there's no right or wrong, but just like play with it. So it's like, maybe we're getting used to expressing our emotions. So maybe just like, maybe we will go overboard and maybe we'll become that friend that's like always sharing and like calling everybody all the time. And like, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> and so I've tried to give myself permission and um, my, two of my closest friends that are my co-breathwork facilitators for the Oat Awakening, Lucas and Hella, we were having a big talk about this a few weeks ago. We were in LA together and I told them, I was like, it still comes up where Lucas is so good where he'll come down the stairs in the morning and I'll be like, how are you feeling? And he'll be like, oh man, I'm going through this huge process right now. And this is what's like present for me. And he'll just go right into it. And I'm like, how do you do that? I come down the stairs and I'm going through the huge process, but it's all inside. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm doing good. <laughs> Because I'm not sure, you know, the day is just starting. Can I bring that on to somebody? Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about how we can just, you know, if somebody asks us how we're doing, just voice it. Be like, this is what's present for me right now. And then that person might not be ready and they might feel like it is a burden in that moment. And then they can do what they need to do. They can be like, really cool, but like, I'm just going to go do some work right now. I've got it on my plate. Or they might be like, thank you for sharing open wide. Like I want to hear everything. So yeah. this is a new thing that I'm playing with is like giving myself permission to just share vulnerably with my close friends moment to moment. And then if it's ever not the right moment, trusting myself that I'll be able to get the social cues. Yeah. I love that. Do you think breath work has been a player in helping you articulate an emotion and how you're feeling and, and being able to express? definitely breath work and um and my morning practice with myself so it's not just the actual breath work sessions it's like how I bro process the breath work session the next day because what I started to do is ask myself how am I feeling right now a question that I would just never ask myself before I got into the habit of when I wake up in the morning I'm just like how am I feeling right now and I'll it, then that question makes us use different language. My emotional vocabulary used to be like good, bad, meh, and like off. It's like, how are you doing today? Good, bad, meh. Or like, I'm just a little off today, but had no idea what was actually happening in there. So by doing breath work, opening up the curtains, seeing what's going on inside, I have such a deeper understanding of why I might be feeling meh. <laughs> mm. And then when I ask myself how I'm feeling, then I can actually articulate it. Yes. Or like fine. Like yeah. fine. <laughs> like, Fine's a weird one. It's like, it's like I can get by, but there's some weird stuff going on. In yeah. There. Or it's like, you're definitely not fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, like I remember in relationships, it's like, okay, well let's, you know, they give me the opportunity. Like, tell me how you feel. And I'm like, like, cause I had, was so badly bad relationship with how I was feeling. I didn't actually really know what I needed or what I wanted or how I was feeling that they'd be like, well, how do you feel then? And I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't know how to express. So I was just like, fine. And then it would just be like a fight. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's totally. like, I think that at the core of all of this and what's really valuable to anyone, no matter what level you're at on your journey is being able to have a deeper relationship to what's going on. And breath work is a huge component of being able to start to express and feel and and be okay with that oh I love the way you put that and my friends and I that practice breath work we joke around that we're using breath work to get to Jedi level living <laughs> where moment to moment we're aware of our inner experience so the other night we were having dinner with like a bunch of people some of them were close friends some of them we didn't know and this one person started getting really um intense with what they were saying and it made us feel uncomfortable and me and my friend we weren't sure how we were feeling we're like oh my god I'm, I just feel really weird in this conversation like and so we just retreated and we got really quiet and then we left and then afterwards we were talking with each other and we were like oh my goodness that person was like projecting their stuff they were doing all these things it made me feel like not in my sovereignty not in my power so I just retreated and we're like so we're getting better with naming it and we were laughing. We're like, next time, what we want to be able to do is just in that moment, be like, oh, I'm feeling this way because, and then just voice it mm -hmm. and just be like, hey, I'm just going to pause this conversation for a moment because I'm feeling these things inside. Is there any chance that what you're saying is coming from a place of, you know, X, Y, Z and just that like Jedi level living where moment to moment you can understand your inner experience and then invite people into deep conversation around what's happening instead of being like, 
this is weird, retreat, or like, this is weird, start a fight. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I love that you say like the inner experience because this is definitely what this is all about. It's like, this is where it's at. And I have this thing where you have to go in to get out. So if you want to express something that's in the moment, you got to know what's going on within, right? Totally. Or else we just project stuff. Yeah. I'm not feeling right now. It must be that person's fault. So I'm just going to get really defensive and yell at them. Yeah, totally. I love oh, that. Oh, I love, I love this too. podcast so much. I love what you stand for. <laughs> what, um, where can people go to find out like where you are doing breathwork workshops and what you're doing? So I'm personally most active on Instagram, Victoria underscore Bowman. That's where I share all about breathwork and like what we're doing in the world um, with breathwork. Um, for breathwork workshops and retreats, if people go to the o2awakening.com, so that's our breathwork experience that we offer, the O2 Awakening. And we have workshops all around the world. We spend most of the year traveling with this. And then we have a Bali retreat um, every year. So people can go there. And then at victoriabauman.com, I have my own personal work and online courses. I love that. I feel like next podcast we should do where I've come to your breathwork ceremony and then we like, we podcast it or something or like, that would be cool. That would be amazing. I would love to do a podcast with you right after you've just done breathwork. Oh, let's make that happen. I feel like we should do that. (laughs) Deal. Next one. Oh, thank you so much for joining me. And I wanted to say, is it one last kind of nugget of wisdom that you want to kind of wrap this whole conversation up around that you feel would be really valuable to share? What would it be? So what I want to end with is not necessarily a nugget of wisdom, but just giving people access to this within themselves, because some people might be listening right now and they're like, they're like, I've never done breath work and I don't even know where I could go to that. Or like, I don't have the funds right now to even go to an experience like that. Um, My favorite thing about breath work is that everybody has access to it in every moment of every day. It's not some like expensive tool that you need to save up. For. So if you're listening right now and you want to experience the power of breathwork on your own, even if you don't do a full, you know, one hour breathing journey where you go into full altered state, I would invite you to just start your days with 30 deep breaths in and out through your mouth and just start doing that. You will already feel a difference. You'll feel energy circulating through your body. You'll feel a little bit more clarity even with 30 breaths, you might start to feel some emotions come up. So if you just give yourself a challenge for the next 20 days, before you do anything else, as soon as you wake up, take 30 deep breaths in and out through your mouth without pause, that will already start to shift your life. Is there a reason why it's 30? No, I just chose that. We have something called the O2 daily practice, which is a way for people to get started with this. If you go on the o2awakening.com, you can download it for free and how to do it. But Mm -hmm. I love to just start with like, you you know, even without any quote technique or like Mm -hmm. ritual or anything, if you just do even 10 deep breaths, you know, sometimes I just pause and I take 10 deep breaths and it changes my whole state. So if people just do 30 deep breaths, that's enough that you like start to really feel it in your body, but not so much that you might just feel like ungrounded and and out of control. Mm, I love that. And I love that practice so much because it's actually mind mind blowing to me, the, the way that we forget to breathe as we walk around life. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like it's, I think I was lucky because I was, I was a singer when I was younger. So I had learnt diaphragm breathing, but I, it's not like, it's not uncommon that people are like, Oh, what? Like I'm not breathing properly. So just being conscious of it and bringing that practice in is, would be life changing for so many people. Yeah. And they studies say that we breathe at a 33% of our lung capacity, 33%, which for me just reflects how fully we're living. You know, most of us are living at like a 33% of who we're here to be and just showing up as ourselves. So I love how you said that. Even if we started to just breathe a little fuller on a day-to-day basis, we would already start to feel deep shifts within us. Mm-hmm. Ah, thank you so much for this fun chat. I've loved it. Thank you so much for being here. And I, and thank you for the work that you're doing in Bali and across the world. Like it's, it's so needed. So I really back you. Mm, Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you for having me. And likewise, I love this platform that you've created. I love the conversations that you have. Thank you so much for the mission that you're on. 
<laughs> so we said we would reconvene after I've done a breathwork session and we didn't take long to navigate that and here we are mm -hmm. and I've just finished the breathwork yeah. session in Sydney. Yeah, so we just did the Sydney, the Ocho Awakening Level 1 and Sam was a champion and went right into it mm -hmm. the moment we started breathing. Yeah. So how are you feeling right now? Because Sam just said to me, she's like, I'm still in it. How are you feeling yeah. right now? Um, I feel tender um i feel so in my heart mm -hmm. and in my body and it's like even like just then when we were trying to fix this i was like i'm still shaking and but i feel i feel free mm -hmm. i feel free oh and it's and it's funny like it I, my intention coming into this and i was talking to my partner like when we were setting the intentions i was like you know my Thing is still that I don't take up space mm. and I was like and I'm gonna go into this and I'm gonna like unblock whatever's still there that's like allowing me to not take up space and so that was my intention and like straight up like the first thing um was what I what I'm really good at is controlling the moment and so like the first thing it was like trying to come through and it was trying to come through and then it was turning into like anger and frustration and irritation because it was like trying to control it and make it pretty and make it you know and then it was like straight and i was like that's it like rip off that band-aid and i just like allowed it out and it started off as like this like, like anger that was like pulsing through my like, my body and my whole being was like, shaking and it was just like wanting to come out and then um one of the one of the facilitators just come and just touch my like tap my heart like as in get back into your heart is what what's going on for me and as soon as i went back there it just something released and i just i just started to cry and started to be in that but from that point from from then on it was like dialogues were happening between me and you know my pop that's in spirit and i think that the question that i was saying is like constantly feel alone yeah. like why do i feel like if i want to take up space like i feel alone like no one's there supporting that and this thing just came through of like it's time now mm -hmm. it's time to like get rid of these vices and just like, step into it and i was having this like back and forth dialogue with my pop that was like i'm so proud of you yes. you're not here alone i've got you it's time to shine your light and it was like seriously like oh and i was like feeling it and then i've had this like feeling in my sacral right like uh, in my room space the last week like a, almost like a um a pain of sorts and then all of the attention just went to this pain and then my hands start to cramp up and i was like there's something in this and it's like just like breathe and breathe with it and it was like you you're looking for any excuse to hold on to something to keep you small and it just was like we're getting rid of this today wow. and it's like yeah, this is the thing and if you really want to take up space like, let's take up space wow. and it was like this, this thing that was there and i was like having to work through my whole body because it was like resistance mm -hmm. and then and then it was like the conversation with my pop being like we've got you you can do this step into your power it's time and then something just like comes in and just rips this thing out of me and like, and then I just erupt. And at the same time as me being like, but have you got me? Like, if have I got support? A song came on and all it said was like, I'm here for you. That's all I heard. Wow. And then I was just, I just released this thing. Something in my, some, like magic in my hand was just like ripping stuff out and like throwing it away that I didn't need anymore. And then I just erupted. And I was just having that all this emotion that turned into this bliss state of so much happiness and so much joy and then it turned into two hysterics because i think there's a large part of me that um has suppressed my joy and my happiness and the way that i love life mm -hmm. because i look around and i'm like oh they're not loving life as much as you know yeah. they're going through a hard time so maybe i shouldn't feel as happy as i feel yeah and so I, I didn't realize how much I'd suppressed it. And so I turned into hysteric laughter for ages. Mm -hmm. I was like rolling around. You know, Isn't it? Like, not, sometimes we think that the only emotions we suppress are sadness and anger, but sometimes exactly. we actually suppress our joy because as you said, we don't want to make other people feel bad. Mm -hmm. So to see you laughing fully like that mm -hmm. in your joy was so beautiful. Yeah. It 
it was like every emotion just accentuates oh, right yeah. and you feel every part of you feeling that yeah and in the past we might have felt like it wasn't safe to express that because we thought people would judge us mm-hmm. but you in that moment were like I'm expressing this and it's still okay yeah and you felt safe in that mm-hmm. which was so beautiful yeah. to see it was like a safety thing for sure yeah. like I think there was times where I was like oh I feel safe to be all of me yes. and like that's what that release and stuff was and I think I someone accidentally maybe touched my foot <laughs> so I needed to feel and it was like this thing of like you know yeah like everything that kind of seems like happens in the space is like helps in some form it like helps you yeah. process or even if it's somebody else's cry or somebody else's anger it just like it adds to your own experience I found mm-hmm. which is part of the beauty of doing this in a group and coming mm-hmm. to a workshop because we do do private sessions as well which is beautiful because it's just you and the facilitator going deep into your own journey yeah. but to come to a workshop where there's 50 60 plus people in the room with you and you can hear their emotions mm-hmm. and what their journey is while you're in yours it just somehow adds to the beauty of like the human experience and for me when I breathe in a group it makes me feel less alone mm-hmm. because when I'm in a private session and I'm screaming or something I'm kind of like why is this happening to me whereas when I'm in a group it's like oh my gosh like life isn't easy and we're all doing this together and there's something in that as you said that can just take us deeper yeah yeah and it's like when you, it's like so much respect for hearing everyone go through that process yes. and like if in that moment you you're not there's no one that's caught in story right yeah. like no one's saying this is my experience of what I'm going through it's just emotion and you can feel the energy of the room mm-hmm. and you can feel that we're all just experience the same stuff but they might be processing it differently or having a different story but it's just the same and so it's like that permission slip to be like, oh, that's what we just need to feel fully and be who we are and bring our fullness because we're all experiencing. I'm so excited for your life after this session because <laughs> I can feel it in you that that was a major shift for you. Yeah, Not every breathwork session is like that. Sometimes they're just seeds and knowing and you mm-hmm. get a little hint, but I feel like for you, this session was like something has changed. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you because you're in it right now, mm-hmm. like your eyes are glowing, you're mm-hmm. in it. Is there any one message that you would want to share with people while you're in this raw, heart open state? Mm-hmm. Like the message that just kept coming was it's safe to be all of you. Like it's so safe to be all of you. And the moments where I was like, oh no, don't because you're not supported, something would support me, like the song or like my. Like you're a vision or whatever. And so the message is like safe to be all of you. And just when you release that stuff that you resist, that you hold on to when it comes out and like, you know, what I had, like I thought there was something going on in my like sacral or my, you know, it now it's released. Yeah. Like whereas I might have stewed on that for a little bit longer, I might have went to the doctors, I might have done all this stuff, but it's like that is just a blocked energy of sorts, and then they can release it, express. I love what you highlighted there around the support didn't always look like what you thought it was going to look like, because I feel like sometimes as we're practicing being our whole selves, we do get judged Mm -hmm. because we are mirroring to other people what that looks like. And then they get self-conscious. So then they judge us. Mm -hmm. So it's not that everybody's going to support us in our full expression, but there always is support. If it's our own breath, if it's like getting signs from guides or loved ones that have passed over or that one friend that does support you like we are always supported even ourselves Mm -hmm. even if everybody else around us is like "Mm, why are you being this way we can show up and support ourselves Mm so I love that you it's like your mind tried to be like no I'm not supported no I'm not supported and then every single time support would come in and so it was that breaking that illusion for you that there might not be support there's always support yeah but like you said at the start, it was this journey yeah. that you go on and it's up and down and you experience all the things. And when you think you've come out of something and you're in that bliss state and you keep breathing, like something else shows up. And it's just, I, I think if you surrender to it and just allow it, it can just be the most beautiful transformation. Like I want it to be one with the ground at the end. Like I was just there. Like, so it's amazing. What, what was your kind of, how would you sum up today for you? I think you did it already just in describing your experience of what today was it's just us realizing that it's safe to be us and that we are already loved that's what's at the core of it all which might sound kind of woo woo 
but the thing is that we all have the same pain and it just manifests in different ways for each of us and control self-consciousness low confidence addictions um feeling alone it's all the same core pain of not feeling like we're loved and not feeling like it's safe to be us so to be in a room where everybody's healing the same wound and it's just taking different forms is really powerful and that's exactly what was happening today and thank you so much for sharing your your real raw experience and it's funny because when i was sharing my journey at the beginning of the workshop it's exactly what you just described mm -hmm. i was taught that it wasn't safe to be all of me that i had to suppress parts of me and i just had to be kind of chill mm -hmm. and now as i've come into this place using breath work where i can just fully express myself life has opened up business relationships i love my partner so much more mm -hmm. i go on deeper adventures in life like my friends i have deeper relationships with them my business is taking off even more so it's a freaking beautiful thing it's to live from so this place good. i highly recommend like anybody coming and doing this stuff like it's like the real work you know like we always talk about oh i'm gonna grow and do this all the time. this I think, like transformation happens in the moment like yes. i feel different you know amen <laughs> oh, Love your work. It's amazing. thank you sam thank you for coming thank you for spreading the power of the breath and letting other people know about it mm -hmm. <laughs>